Hello, my friend. I hope you're having a beautiful day. Today, we're going to talk about how not to worry about your next meal. Let's go. Here are the benefits when you don't worry about your next meal. First, you don't stress about food. You don't think about it all the time, so you can relax. Which means, number two, that you're more focused and present with your work, for instance, or whatever you're doing. And the third benefit that I see is that then you learn, I learn, how to trust that you'll have food on a regular basis, that you're not going to starve to death, right? Those are the benefits of not worrying about the next minute. Let's see how we can do that. So, but beforehand, I want to present myself, introduce myself a little bit. So my name is Nadej Cezana and I go by Nan. I'm a certified life and weight loss coach called the Cravings Coach. I'm a former binge eater and snacker. I was this way for 30 years. And now, now I've overcome this challenge. I help coaches eat what they said they would eat with zero fear of having extras to get stronger than ever. This is the job that I love doing. Right. And right now, I'm currently following a food plan based on macronutrients. My goal is to build muscles for my better future. And by that, I mean that I'm turning 50 in May and I want to be in the best shape possible for the next 50 years of my life. My grandmother being 104, nearly 105, that's a real possibility for me. So today we're going to talk about the three steps not to worry about your next meal. And it goes like this. First, we're going to notice. Then we're going to question what we've noticed, and then we're going to make decisions. And I'll show you how easy it can be. So first, let's notice what's happening. And I'm going to use my example because last, not so long ago, I noticed that it was 3 p.m. and I had eaten my meals, one, two, three. <laughs> I've got five meals a day and I had eaten three of them. My next meal was scheduled at 6 p.m. And my goal, let me remind you of this, is to lose fat and build muscles. But when I noticed that uh, there was this gap between 3 p.m. and 6 p.m., three hours, my immediate thought was I have nothing to eat until 6 p.m. And when I thought I have nothing to eat until 6 p.m., immediately I felt anxious. What I did when I felt anxious was that I kept thinking about the food. I really saw time as a problem, which means that I was worried. And I forgot that I could be okay not eating for three hours, that I didn't, I didn't think, didn't come to mind that my body could use my fat store, which is actually what I want. And I didn't check my body sensation, whether I was really hungry or not. And I snacked, even if I was not hungry. So as a result of being in that spiral of doing that, I made nothing of my goal. My goal of losing fat, gaining muscle. So here's another way to see it in a you know, more general thing. So here was the circumstances, right? The time, my goal, and my thought, which sounds very dramatic. I have nothing to eat until 6 p.m., which created this feeling of anxiety, which made me behave this way. And as a result of this behavior, I made nothing of my goal to lose fight and build muscles because I was not checking my body sensations and I snacked even if I was not hungry. And what's really interesting here, and you can see this big arrow here, is that it's really this thought, I have nothing to eat until 6 p.m. That made me actually make nothing of my goal. Because all circumstances can make, can't make us feel any emotion. The fact that it was 3 p.m. and that I ate in meals one, two, three, could not make me feel anxious, right? It was simply a time and food that were not on the fridge, in the fridge anymore, but in my body instead. That's it. That can't make me feel anxious. That can't make anyone feel anxious. But it's only because I was choosing to think I have nothing to eat until 6 p.m. that then I was feeling that anxiety. My thought was creating my emotion. Or circumstances can't drive our actions. If I choose to have a snack, it was it had nothing to do with the fact that I eaten meals one, two, three, and that the next meal was scheduled at 6 p.m. No. What made me snack was this thought that created the anxiety, I have nothing to eat until 6 p.m., right? That made me immediately react and have a snack so that I wouldn't have this feeling of anxiety, so that I would change my thought to, oh, I have something to eat. 
So all thoughts drive all action. Deciding to, to think I have nothing to eat until 6 p.m. made me actually reach for the snack. And similarly, all circumstances can produce a result. Remember, my goal is to lose fat and gain muscle. But because I snacked, I actually created a different result. And I snacked because I was feeling anxious, because I was thinking I have nothing to eat until 6 p.m. So really, it's that thought, I have nothing to eat until 6 p.m. that made me do nothing of my goal. So now we've gained this awareness that the thought is what created this result, making nothing of my goal. Let's question the thought, right? Because we don't want, I didn't want to stay in that loop. So that's why I, you know, uh, unraveled it for myself so that I would notice what was happening and so that then I could move on by questioning it. This is what I do with my clients on a regular basis. We notice and then we question what we've noticed, what we've uncovered. So let's question. Here are three questions that I ask myself. To move forward, the goal is not to stay stuck in that pattern, but to change the way we think because it is possible. So why not? Why not benefit from it? So the first question that I asked myself was, is it true that I have nothing to eat until 6 p.m.? And then I realized, no, it's not true. My pantry is full. My fridge is full. My stomach also is full. So it was not true. The second question then I asked myself is then, OK, if it's not true, then why is my brain offering me to believe that thought? Right. And it was probably because my brain wants the best for me. It wants to protect me. It wants me not to feel deprived, especially since for the longest time I've been dieting extreme diets. You know, when you really deprive your body of a certain number of calories, you go very low, thinking that it's really important for you to lose weight. Right. So it makes sense that coming from that place, my body, my brain wants to protect me from going into starvation mode again. Right. And it's thinking that if I'm not eating between 3 p.m. and 6 p.m., it means that we're depriving ourselves again, even though that's really not what I'm doing anymore. Right. So it makes sense that my brain wants me to believe that uh oh, problem. Um, I've got nothing to, to eat until 6 p.m. because it doesn't want me to die. Thank you, brain. And the third question is, how can I reassure myself? Right. And so how can I reassure myself? It could be there are plenty of ways to do that, but it could be simply to remember that, yeah, right now my stomach's full and there's plenty of food in the pantry. There's plenty of food in the fridge. There's plenty of food in the universe. I live in Paris. There are bakeries, there are restaurants, grocery stores everywhere. Right. And I need to ask myself the question, how can I reassure myself to find ways to reassure myself? There are plenty of different ways, as I was saying, that's what I do with my clients, depending on where they are, depending on who they are, depending on what they need. OK, so this reassuring thing, it's something that we can deal with. We can manage. We can reassure ourselves. Right. Even if we're not changing the circumstances, we're not snacking, we're not eating. We don't have to to feel reassured. Right. My brain used to think that it was only when I was putting food in my body that then I could feel reassured. But that was not the case either. We'll talk about that later, right? So here are the three questions that I used to move forward. And then I decided, right? I decided to choose thoughts that were really benefiting me. Remember, my thought was creating my result, but I didn't want that result where I was making nothing of my goal. So here are three different thoughts that I could have gone to and that I played with and that created a totally different result for me. So here are three thoughts that could help you too. The first one is that, Simply acknowledging, yes, I'm thinking I have nothing to eat until 6 p.m. And I also know it's a choice I'm making for my own good, which brings me back to my goal of losing fat, gaining muscle, right? I'm thinking I have nothing to eat until 6 p.m. as if it was completely uh, out of my control. And I'm bringing myself back to I know it's a choice I'm making and I know exactly why. Right. So bringing myself back into what's in my control and why I'm choosing and deciding to do this. The second thought that I played with is thank you, brain, for wanting to keep me safe and alive, creating that feeling of gratitude for my brain and what crazy thoughts it's offering me. There's a reason for that. It makes sense. My brain doesn't want us to die. So thank you, brain, for wanting me to keep safe and alive. Then again, it's acknowledging that it's got a good intention except that it's not serving me in the moment. It's just a bit misguided. It's okay. 
the third thought that I chose for myself was there's no way I'm going to starve myself. And I really, truly made this pact with myself one and a half year, years ago. It was really, no, we're not bullying ourselves anymore. We're done with that. We're not beating ourselves up anymore. We're making that pact that we no longer make ourselves miserable by depriving ourselves of the food, by, you know, choosing thoughts also that create that anxiety. No, no more. So there's no way I'm going to starve myself. It's that very strong decision that I'm making, that commitment I'm having with myself that no, from now on, from, yeah, we one and a half years ago, we decided we're no longer doing it. So bringing myself back to the new version of me who's no longer, you know, depriving herself. So that's it. So I hope those questions, those thoughts help you, can help you actually eat what you said you would eat and get stronger than ever. Because if this is your goal too, then it is possible. I really want you to do to know that, that if I can do it, so can you. I've just got a very regular, very normal brain. And chances are you have a brain too that works very similarly to mine. So if I, I can do it, you can do it too. And remember, I used to be a binge eater. I used to be a snacker that went on for 30 years. And no longer, I no longer do that, right? Which helps me get as strong as I want to today, right? So it is possible for me. Of course, it's possible for you. Simply, there's a way to do it, right? There's a way that I use, that I use with my client to do this. Because it can be very simple. Really, there are three steps to eat. You have a food plan, so you plan your food for the day. And then you eat the food you have planned. And then you check, right, what happened between the plan and the eating. Was it exactly the same thing? If not, no problem. Time to explore, time to see what went differently, not necessarily wrong, but what went differently and why, right? So that next time we know, we prepared, we have a strategy around those times. And we don't do that by beating ourselves up, by uh, criticizing ourselves, by using willpower, resistance, you know, that pushing ourselves or that forcing ourselves. No, no more. We're choosing a kind and logical approach, right? Because we know there will be bumps on the road. Those bumps can stop you. Here are a few of them. A tiredness, temptation. Your partner brings home cookies that you didn't expect. What to do, right? We can do something about it without completely resisting the cookies, without completely indulging in eating all the cookies. No, there's a way we can treat ourselves very well, reach our goals, even when there are cookies at home that we didn't anticipate. We can also learn how to deal with hunger, which of course is going to come up, right? We, we're human beings, so of course we're going to be hungry, but how not to freak out when we feel hunger. And of course, we may eat out, we may go to the restaurant, we may go to friends and family. So what to do in those moments? To stay as close as we want to, to our goal. There may also be what I call food incidents. The food that you had planned has suddenly disappeared because there are other members in your family that, of course, eat food. <laughs> Funny that. Or it can have gone wrong or maybe the, the can doesn't open the way it should be and some, some, something like that. Or you could, could be discouraged, you could feel frustrated, you could be disappointed because you're not getting the results that you want. All these reasons, you know, could, all these situations could be reasons for you to give up, completely give up on yourself and a new goal. And if you don't want that, I can help you, right? It, there, there are ways to go through the challenges and still eat what you said you would eat and reach your goal, which is to get stronger than ever. So if you want, for those of you who want help customized to your specific needs, to your specific challenges, to your particular food plan, so that you reach your unique goals, whatever stronger than ever looks like for you, I want you to apply to Conquer Your Food Cravings for Good. Let me tell you a little bit about this program. So Conquer Your Food Cravings for Good is my program, my coaching program. It's the only one-to-one -one online coaching program for coaches who want to finally follow their food plans, eat what they said they would eat, with no force or deprivation, so that they get stronger than ever. It means that they can get the health and the body that they do want, right? Imagine, imagine no longer going from one extreme, that is to say, obsessing about your food plan, 
to the other one, completely ignoring your food plan and binging on all your favorite foods. Imagine no longer going from one extreme to the other one. Imagine no longer feeling really bad in your body, you know, when you've eaten too much, when you feel heavy, bloated, sluggish, oh, those terrible sensations. Imagine also no longer having the emotions that usually go with overeating. That is to say, feeling terrible about yourself, ashamed, maybe regretful, guilty, right? Imagine no longer questioning your coaching tools. Do they even work, right? Imagine no longer having that question running in the background. Imagine no longer hiding from your clients out of fear that they find the truth, the ugly truth about you, that you're an imposter, that you can't do as you teach them to do. Instead, I want you to imagine knowing without the shadow of a doubt that you'll go back on track. Whether it's been a slice of pizza, a piece of bread, a piece of chocolate, you know deep in your bones that you're going to be back on track. And not next Monday, not next month, not when the mood is full or whatever, but immediately and feeling so empowered that you're doing so, right? That's the best feeling ever for me. So imagine feeling so good in your body, right? You're eating what you said you would eat. So you feel the benefits of eating what you said you would eat in your body. You feel light, you feel energized, you feel strong too, and you feel as if you were invincible. Imagine also the emotions that you get to feel when you eat what you said you would eat. You feel super proud of showing off your body in your cute new clothes, maybe on social media, maybe to your partner, maybe to your friends. Imagine that feeling of pride, best ever too. I know, just like funny Paul level with empowered. Also, I want you to imagine being more present for your clients. So your coaching is better. Of course, there's no longer this chatter, this rumination in your mind about you as a coach, about you and your relationship with food. It's gone. So you can focus 100% on your clients and the issues they bring you. Imagine also being so confident that you're a product of your product. You eat what you said you would eat. You can do that. You're not an imposter. On the contrary, you're the perfect of example of what's possible. So, of course, that attracts new clients like a magnet. Imagine also how certain you show up in your marketing because you know for sure that your coaching tools work. They work for your clients and they work for you. And if you're like me, I'm my most complicated client. So if they work for you, of course, they work for any clients you may have. So imagine also that as a consequence of you showing up with so much confidence, with so much certainty, that your clients are really happy to renew. And this also send you even more referrals than they used to. So of course, as a consequence, you make more money. So I want you to know that in the, in the Conquer Your Food Cravings for Good program, there are two main steps. One is saying yes, the other one is saying no. Let me explain. So first, in the Conquer Your Food Cravings for Good program, we say yes to your food plan and your dream. That means that we build a self-trust that you can follow your food plan. You're certainly already able to follow your plan. Maybe not around food yet, but there must be other areas of your life where you do as you said, right? So we're simply bringing that trust that you have for yourself, the fact that you keep your promises to yourself in one area, we simply bring it to your food plan. And it means that then we say no, right? This is the second, the other side of the coin. We say no to food temptations and to their repercussions, right? The health risks that come from eating a diet that's too rich in sugar, maybe or other things. And we do that. We say no to food temptations with three simple steps. The first one is to understand why you long for extra food, right? The second step, once we've understood, is to decrease. We decrease the desire that we have for extra food. 
And then it's super easy. It's a no brainer to say no, thank you to the extra food. We decline the extra food easily. Let me tell you a little bit about the features of the Conquer Your Food Cravings for Good program. So as I said, it's a one-to-one -one program. It's only you and me. It's online, so it's very convenient. It lasts three months. And included in those three months, there are 12 30-minute private coaching calls, you and I. And between those coaching calls, because we know that, of course, things happen, things may happen in between those coaching calls, you have unlimited written or audio coaching, depending on your preference, Monday through Friday. So here's the investment for Conquer Your Food Cravings for Good. Three payments of 1,100 euros, which means that if you choose the payment plan, it's 3,300 euros. And if you choose the payment in full, then you save 300 euros because it's only 3,000 euros. You know that you want to eat what you said you would eat. You know that you want to get stronger than ever. You know that it can be as simple as plan, eat, check. You know that you can overcome the challenges that are part of any journey. And you know you want the support of a coach with a kind and logical approach. So here's what I want you to do next. I want you to book your free Crave Control Consultation call. Let me tell you a little bit about this call. So what we're going to do during this call is that we're going to step into that future version of you. We're going to see what you really want and what it will look like. That's super fun. Then we're also going to find out what's really stopping you from eating what you said you would eat and from being st as strong as ever. It's probably not what you think. Very often people come to me to a consult call saying, well, I'm lazy. This is what I've always done, so there's no way I can change the way I, I am. This is not true, my friend. I can tell you, knowing for a fact that I used to be a binge eater and I'm no longer a binge eat, right? So, of course, it's probably not what you think. There's probably nothing wrong with you. You're probably not broken, for sure. Here's a third thing that we do during the free craft control consultation call. We get a clear blueprint customized to your needs so that you reach your health and body goals no matter what. We plan for the challenges and we build a strategy around the challenges. And of course, I answer all the questions that you may have about working with me, which means that then you'll be able to make a clear decision that you like. Are you going to work with me or not? It can be that simple, right? And you're going to leave this call knowing for sure, with clarity, what your next step is going to be. So to book, to book your free Crave Control Consultation call, all you need to do is scan this QR code or below this video, you're going to find the direct link. That's it. I want to thank you so much for your trust. Thank you for watching this video. And I'm going to wish you a very beautiful day without worrying about your next meal. Take care. Bye.